Hey what's going on everybody and welcome back to another Dark Fall tutorial and in this video we're going to be creating a digital matte painting as you can see in the example here. And the first thing we could do is go ahead and click VFX. Now we don't need these two windows, so I'm just gonna close this up here like that. And then go ahead and open up the movie clip you wanna work with. So this is the video I'll be using. If you wanna download this too, there will be a link in the blog. Go ahead and check that out. Now I'm just gonna open up this window here, which is our timeline, and just scroll and zoom out, just so we can see the whole timeline. Now this video clip doesn't last 250 frames, so what we can do is go over here to set scene frames. And we can see what that does is set the frames for us. And the next thing we can do is go ahead and prefetch this. And if this bar doesn't fill up all the way, you will need to go to edit preferences and then increase the memory cache limit. But this is only a small clip, so it's filled up all the way and we can play through this and see how it looks. Now you might not be able to notice, but if we zoom in, we'll see that the camera is actually moving slightly. So when we go ahead and add in elements such as images or videos, we do need to track this and make sure that the assets follow along. So it's not hard to do, it's pretty simple. Over here in the tracking settings, I'm going to change the match to previous frame. I'm also going to enable normalize. And then I'm going to go over here and change this to the track tab. And then let's pick a spot. I'm going to hold control and click just to add a tracking marker. So I'm also going to press alt S just to enable the search size. You can also turn that on over here. If you go to clip display and then down to search, just enable this if you want. It's entirely up to you. So now I'm going to press S, scale this up a little bit and then scale this down a touch. And there we go, so let's just jump to the first frame. Make sure you're happy with the position. I'm going to press G, and we can move this around if you need to. So now since we're on the first frame, I'm going to go ahead and track this forward by pressing this button here. And we can see pretty quickly it's just tracked this through, and that's good. So that's all we need to do here. Now we can move on to the compositing. So let's jump over to the compositing tab up here. Now as always, we need to make sure we check use nodes. We get the render layer and a compositor. Now in this example, we don't need a render layer, so let's go ahead and get rid of that. Then shift A, go to input and add in a movie clip. Connect this up and then go ahead and load up the movie clip. So if we click this icon, we can select the clip we've already loaded in. And now we see a preview of it down here. So let's just add in a viewer node. So if you hold control shift and then left click on this movie clip, we can see it adds in a viewer node here. Now the background's a little bit too big, so I'm gonna change this to view and just click fit and it'll just fit this to our view. Let's just move this out of the way. So you may or may not notice, but the color space has been changed to filmic. So what we need to do is go to the render property tab here, then scroll all the way down to the bottom, click color management. And then what you wanna do is change this view transform from filmic back to standard. And we can see it's now using the correct color space. Okay, so now we have this, we can go ahead and render this image out and use it as a reference. So I'm gonna press F12. And you want to save this to somewhere that you can remember. So go to image and then press save, or you can use the shortcut, which is alt S. So now that's been saved, let's hit escape. And then we can jump over to your image editor of choice. So let's grab our reference image and load it in. So if you fold along already in the previous digital map paintings, you probably already know what's going to happen. We're going to be using this as a reference image. Then we can add the assets and then export the final image out. So it's pretty simple to do. Let's start with our first image. Just go ahead and drop this in. And again, if you want to use any of these images, the links will be in the blog. Let's go ahead and scale this down. Something like this. It's going to go ahead and sit in the background. Then I'm just going to zoom in and delete some of this that we don't need. And one thing that you can do that might help is reduce the opacity of this layer. So we can see the background image. Then we can reposition this and then get rid of the things that we don't need. So I'm going to use the lasso tool just get rid of all this here. And delete it, bring this opacity back. And there we go. So now we need to change the colors and blend it in a bit more. Again, I did a video which goes into a bit more detail. I'll probably link to it up here. Get rid of this, get rid of this over here as well.
So now it's in position, what we need to do is blend it in by changing the colors and also maybe blend the edges as well. So there's probably a few different ways on how to do that. I'm gonna to go to colors and there's lots of different tools that you can use to try and blend in the colors. So I'm gonna to go to hue saturation and then I'm gonna change the lightness to try and blend this in. And then also maybe reduce the saturation as well. Something like that. And then use a soft edge brush and just delete some of these edges here. And then maybe we can pick out some highlights. I don't want to do too much since this is a background um, asset. I don't really want to focus on this area, but let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to duplicate this image. First, I'm going to mute this top one and go to the second one here. And then I'm just going to go to colors, then down to curves, and then bring this up. Hit OK, and then go back to this layer here and activate this. Then using the eraser tool, maybe scale this down a bit. Then we can paint in some highlights. So maybe this up here, maybe some of the steps. Then we can merge this down. And there we go, that's the bridge. We could also add some shadows in, which we'll be doing for the house. So, so let's go ahead and add in the next one. So this is the house slash cottage that I'm gonna be using. And I've already cut this out from the background, so it's just gonna make it a little bit easier for this video. But yeah, it was pretty simple. You just use the lasso selection tool. Just go around like this, uh, select the areas that you want to keep and delete the areas that you don't. So it's pretty simple. Now we have this. I'm going to scale this down a bit. And again, same thing we did with the bridge. Just cut this out to maybe place it in the scene a little better. And we can see it looks a little bit better. Again, we need to blend it in with the colors, hue and saturation. Let's bring this lightness down saturation down a bit you also go to colors brightness and contrast play around with the brightness and contrast and again play with the colors and the highlights and uh, make this look a lot better the next thing i want to do is add some background shadows because if this was really there it would cast some shadows onto the background so let's go ahead and do that as well so I'll create a new layer let's just place this above the reference image have a black color selected choose your brush Let's go ahead and increase the size and just paint in some shadows onto the background here. Then if we go to filters, blur, Gaussian blur, and then just increase the size so it's a lot softer. Hit OK. And then if you need to, just reduce the opacity as well. And remember, we also need to do the same thing for the house. Make sure we, have, make sure we add some contact shadows. So pretty much the same thing. So that's basically the idea. I'm going to go through this now and take my time and try and make things look a lot better and I'll be back in a second. So I spent maybe 10 more minutes just going through this and making it look a little bit better by adding some more shadows, a bit of grunge here, some more highlights and stuff. So now if we get rid of the reference image, we don't need it. Go ahead and delete it. So now we can export this out and use it in Blender. And then now back in Blender, we can start composing this and uh, doing the good stuff. Let's go ahead and uh, jump right in. So to add additional assets to our movie clip, so whether that's videos or images, we need to do a few things. Uh, we could do it the normal way, which will take a little bit longer, or we could do it the quick and easy way, which I will show you at the end. But first, let's take a look at the normal way. So Shift A, go to color, add in a mix node, drop this in here. Shift A, go to input, add in an image. Go ahead and open up the image we just exported, and then let's connect this up. And then on this mix node, we just need to check use alpha, which is this button here. And there we go. Now, as I mentioned before, this video clip is moving slightly. So if we played through this, it'll be quite obvious that the assets don't move. So we do need to make sure this image follows along with the movie clip, which again, it's not hard to do. It's just adding more nodes. So shift A, go to distort, then translate and just drop this in here. And then one more node, if we shift A, go to input and track position. Then on this node, let's click this movie clip icon, choose the movie clip that we've already loaded in. Then for this first selection, we just choose camera. Then for this one, we're just going to choose the track that we added. And there's only one track. Go ahead and select it. Then connect the X to the X and the Y to the Y. Now we can see the image has moved. We do need to change this position from absolute to relative start. 
and we can see it just jumps back to the original position. So we can see it's quite a few steps to add this in. So what you could do, I'm just going to delete these two. So the quick way to do this would be to use the VFX nodes add-on if you have it downloaded. For those of you who don't know, it is a free Blender add-on I have been developing. So go ahead and check that out if you want. There will be a video up here. Let's first go to tools and then we can go down to patch node. Let's go ahead and add in a patch node. So we just drop this in here and it's going to do the same thing as before, except maybe give us some more options. So let's take our matte image and plug this into the patch movie clip here. And then we need to make sure we plug something in for the patch mask. So let's take the alpha and plug this into the patch mask. And there we go. So we've got the same things we did before. Let's also connect the track position. So same thing, just connect the track position to the X, Y to the Y. And there we go. Now that's tracked. So you can see it's one node that we add in, does the same job, yet yeah, it gives us some more options, like we could also make some final adjustments. We can make some adjustments on the fly. So yeah, go ahead and download the VFX nodes. It'll make your job a lot easier for simple tools or for other kind of effects. I don't know, you go ahead and check it out. So this is just an image, but if you had a movie clip as well, you could do the same thing with a movie clip or an image sequence or whatever you want to use. So what I'm going to do real quick is do the same thing, but this time add an image sequence of some birds. Again, we could go to the patch node and add this in, or if you want to use a shortcut, we can press control A. Then we can select patch node again, adds in another one, drop this in, shift A, go to image. And again, this is going to be an image sequence. So open this up. So now we have our image sequence loaded in. I'm going to take the image and plug this into the patch movie clip here. Again, take the alpha, plug this into the patch mask here. And we can see we have a pair of birds just standing there doing nothing. So let's go ahead and move this around by using these options. Let's first scale this down. And then I'm going to maybe sit them on top of this roof here. So let's move this over. And you might not even notice them in the final edit. But it's always great to have more things added into the shot because it blends it all in and makes it look more alive. And again, we need to make sure we track the position. We could actually use the same track position that we used before since it's the same track. So I'm just going to drag these over, plug these in like so. And now the birds will move along with the video as well. So now we have that, I'm going to go ahead and do a few things just to make it look a lot nicer. Again, these are all down to your preference, what you think looks good. Let's go ahead and add some smoke or mist into this. Again, I'm going to use one of these tools. Let's use the gradient node. So the gradient node will just add in a basic gradient down here. Shift A, go to color mix drop this in i'm going to plug this into the factor and then if you want some more control which we do so i'm going to shift a go to converter add in a color ramp just between these two here like this and then what we can do is bring this up and switch these around just so we can have the thicker part of the mist down here and let's drag this down over and then what we can do if we select this white handle then also make this a darker color and then play around with this until we get something that looks a lot better. If you want, you can change the color of the mist. Maybe again, that's uh, up to you. Now, the next thing I want to do is maybe uh, add some bright light over here. Maybe as if the sun is hitting these mountains and then casting a glare. So let's go ahead and do that as well. It's pretty simple. Shift A, go to color, add in a mix node again. Connect this up to the viewer node by pressing control shift left clicking. Then shift A, Go down to matte. Let's add in an ellipse mask. Connect this up to the factor. And then let's make this smaller by reducing the width and the height. And then we want to position this up here and also change the color. Something like this. Let's press N, get rid of this toolbar, make this a little bit smaller as well. Just so we can see what we're working with. So yeah, let's move this over here. Let's go to the Y and move this up. Let's also move it on the X a little bit as well. So now we have this, let's take this ellipse mask and bring it up here. Let's add a blur here. So shift A, go to filter, add in a blur node. Just drop this in here between the mask and the mix node. And if you want, you can change this to fast Gaussian and change this to something big, maybe 200. So now we have this intense glow over here. Again, we can play around with the color and also the blend mode. 
So depending on what kind of look you're going for, maybe something real subtle. I'm going to change this back to mix. And then maybe control it with a color ramp node, shift A, convert a color ramp, drop this in here and select the white handle and then just drop this down. So maybe something more subtle like this. And then the next thing I want to do is add some sunbeams. Shift A, color, you guessed it, and mix node. Connect this up and then take this here and plug this into the second image slot. Shift A, go to filter and then sunbeams. And we're going to drop this onto the bottom string. So now this should turn black, which it does. And we can increase this ray length as much as you want. So we can see it's created these sunbeams or these rays and and you can play around with the position if you want or if you have this node selected you can just click this x and move it around give it a second to update and we can see that the position of the rays change so before we settle on a position i just want to go to this mix node and just change this blend mode to screen so we can see that's much better if we click the sunbeams again and this time we're going to position this maybe where this orange glow was in fact, maybe a bit higher than the glow, just to give these streaks. If this is too much, you can always reduce this by reducing the factor. Now we can add some color grading. I'm going to shift A, go to color, add a color balance node. Drop this in, connect this up. And then play around with the shadows, then the midtones. And I'm going to leave the highlights alone. And then finally, I'm going to add a vignette node. Again, you can press N and go down to the tools and add a vignette node or you can press Control a and then go to tools same thing it's entirely up to you uh, once that's added in uh, where is it <laughs> it's down here connect this up see it creates a vignette just need to change the feather amount make this something quite big maybe 200 so that looks okay but what we could do is change the focus point let's change this back to zero just so we can see what we're working with now instead of focusing on all of this, we just want to focus on the house. We could reduce this scale and then just move the position. And then we can change the feather amount back to 200 and see how that looks. We just mute this, you can see that's without. It just adds a bit of a focus to the shot. Again, I'm going to play around with this and make it look a little bit better, but uh, you guys get the idea. Once you're happy with this, we can go ahead and render it out. Again, if you have the VFX nodes add-on enabled, you can press N. Then if we go to the top, we go to the render settings here and we can just change everything that we need to change, such as the resolution, the frames or the frame rate, set the output, then the file format. I'm going to change this to a movie clip. So I'll change this to an FF MPEG video. I'm also going to change the container to MPEG4. And again, if you want to change the view transform back to filmic, that's entirely up to you. Go ahead and do that. And then go ahead and render this out by pressing Control F12 or hit this button here. And go ahead and render it out. So yeah, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.